Hey team, welcome to Inside the Movie Photographer with Jason Boland. Scott and I are at Corey Creed's place. I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your action with the Z62. Look at this place. As we say in Australia, how's the serenity? I've got the 14 to 24, and I'm going to, I'd love to get full frame on the 14. So we'll see. I'm right on top of you. That's like a 14 mil lens too. Woo! Corey Creed, absolute legend. Pilot in his own right. Astronaut, in fact. When he hits that uh, plateau, lines up the landing, he feels like he's floating in space. Like right underneath, like down and then closer, or? Like, yeah. I'll do three. Get, if we get the sun, we should try and do it as late as we can. Yeah, I'll be here with the dark. If it pops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well there's a better one. See, that's pretty cool, right? Right? Yeah. It's like... <laughs> the money shot. Setting it to um, frame rate high plus, gets rid of the blackout. We shoot first couple at like 500th. This is a shot that I've been wanting to do since the first time I photographed you. Oh yeah, sick. That is sick. Right? Yeah. I'm just going to throw my camera around and see how we go with that. And uh, I'm going to go 24 to... 70 because I want to get in there as tight as I possibly can and um, then I'll do some uh, you know some stuff straight towards us with the 70 to 200 you know both S class <laughs> my son was like it was that close to hitting you in the back it was like oh cool Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Oh, anytime, I love it. Yeah. So, like, you know, the old guy loves his work. <laughs> like taking yeah. photos, it's good fun. So, and they, they, were the, they were the shots that I've been hanging out for. So, I hope you enjoyed this one because I had a load of fun. Um, I almost forgot what I was doing, and that was showing you guys how you can shoot action with a Z6 II. And um, who cares? Because it was awesome action and it was so much fun. Okay, see you next time. Don't forget. Do the bell and uh, please subscribe and um, I don't know what I can do to beat that one. Jeez. So team, there you go. How much fun was that? As you could see, uh, I couldn't take the smile off my face and I just love days like that. You know, Kyrie made it. He's a good mate and he's just a good guy and uh, I had so much fun. The thing with the 6.2, I'll shoot it on high frame rate. That's the high with the little asterisk next to it. And that eliminates nearly all of the blackout so that you can actually see through the frame and follow it in real time. Now, the other thing that I do is I set all my cameras to 12 bit. Now, if you set it to 12 bit, everything speeds up. Focus speeds up, frame rate speeds up. I promise you, it's like a camera turbocharge. What 14 bit does, I don't really know anyway. I know it's color, but what do we do in post? We change all the color anyway. So what does it really matter? So make that change and it's going to speed up your focus. It's going to speed up your frames. It's going to make your camera zing. And especially when you're shooting action, that's important. Right. So I also shoot manual exposure. You've got a beautiful mirrorless camera with an EVF that you can live time see the exposure. You should know by now where the shutter and the aperture controls are. And it's just so simple. You can see it right through the viewfinder. You know, you can control it as you come through the sun or, you know, plus when you are shooting through the sun, you don't want it to change. You might want to do it silhouette or 
you know, there's a million reasons why you don't want the camera to just change things for you. Remember, you're a team, but you've got to be the boss. Control the camera. Don't let the camera control you. Now, my favorite little one, while we're talking about focus, is to turn the focus ring off on your S-glass lenses. Now, I had a couple of instances when I first got my uh, 70 to 200 that I was getting these images that were like just minuscule off. And I'm like, what is going on? And then I realized what was happening is I was shooting action and I would bump the focus ring. And that would knock it out of autofocus into manual focus. And then I was getting these uh, irregular results. So you can change that in settings. You do want to be able to use the focus ring for when you're doing portraits and, you know, just other things when you're shooting through fences or whatever. So, uh, yeah, don't forget that tip. Turn that one off. Okay. So choosing the right shutter speed is imperative when shooting action. Now, you can shoot action anywhere from, you know, 15th of a second all the way through to 8,000th. But there's a couple of uh, semi-rules and there's a couple of rules to be broken. Now, you've all seen those wonderful pan shots where all the background's out of focus and just the subject is sharp. They blow me away. I've never been able to do them. Does my head in. Wish I could, but I can't. But I do like using shutter speeds anywhere from 160th to 320th. I just like to uh, throw a little bit of movement into it just so that it livens the image up a little bit, you know. Um, even when you, you know, the stuff that you saw me throwing my camera around, you know, following Cory down. Now that I managed to get a little bit of movement into it and I think that was like, you know, 500th or 640th of a second, something like that. So, you know, if you're moving the camera around really fast, you'll still get that movement. But you just want to give yourself the best opportunity to get what you can. So, you know, especially when it's uh, water and stuff like that, I always shoot 160th to 320 because I want to have that water movement in it, you know, whether that's snow or rain, whatever. Anyway, that's another conversation. But back to the action. So um, sometimes, obviously, you've got to play it safe. So you need to shoot in a thousandth, two thousandth of a second, sometimes even faster. But uh, in general, you know, try and have a play around with it and see what works for you. But uh, like I said, you know, slower you, slowest you can do it, eh, happy days. Okay, focus modes. Your Z6 II has many different focus modes, as do most cameras. And there's a reason for that. It's because they're all used for completely different things. There's no one go-to. Well, if there was a go-to, it would be the dynamic. But you need to use the different focus modes depending on what you're shooting. Now, when I'm shooting my kids' ice hockey, for example, I use the auto area small so that I can slot in between other players and not have so much distraction going on. Or when I'm photographing someone running towards me, I'll use the dynamic. You can also use the small block and you can also use the large block in the auto area. Now, I don't often use the full auto area. Now, the reason for that is mostly you're tracking with a moving subject, so it's coming from a distance. Now, if you've got something set up where it's the auto area, it's not quite sure where to pick it yet. It doesn't know what the subject is, so it can flick to the background. So what you need to do is you want to have the smallest point that you can get on a focus area and you want to put that on your subject and you want to track with that. Now, I use what I call sniper mode for a lot of the stuff that I'm shooting, whereas I'll put the focus point in the middle, then I'll slot it up a couple of spots so that when I'm picking up my camera super fast, I know where it's going to be and I'm halfway to shooting the action before I even get there. You know, my finger's already down on the shutter. Now, the other thing you can do as well is... You can pick a beginning of a focus point. So manually focus on an area and then follow or track the subject towards where you're going to. Like in this case, it would be Corey doing the jump off the uh, off the quarter pipe. So I focused on the end of the quarter pipe. And then as he gets up there, I then put my finger to uh, half press to activate the autofocus and then track him from there and follow him. Now, you've got to help your camera. Uh, the camera doesn't know what you're thinking up here. So whatever you can do to make things work, the better it is at the end of the day when you come home and you go through your stuff. 
But the one mode that I don't recommend for action is eye focus for obvious reasons. Um, eye focus is looking for a face, looking for an eye, and when we're shooting action, a lot of the time, that's just not possible. You know, your subject's got a helmet on, or you know they're obscured, or something like that, and you just don't want to risk that. You just you want to help the camera, as I said, small point, be accurate. Right. Well, then let's hook into a couple of photos. Okay. So this is from the sequence of uh, Corey jumping over the top of me, and. Uh, I love this shot. It's, it's, I don't know. It's just one of those things, you know, you're on the line. This is full frame, 14 mil, by the way. And I was uh, his lineup for the landing strip, I believe. <laughs> so this is shot, oh, I think like 640 or 800 of a second. So I'm moving it so fast that you can see quite clearly that there's some movement in the frame. So that's what I'm talking about. It just brings it to life a little bit. And um, I think that he should get some sponsors put on the undercarriage there next time we do a shoot. So this is another example. This is a good little whip out towards me, actually. I think it nearly uh, pushed me down the, down the hill. This is another full frame 14 mil, which um, that gives you an idea of just how close we are. You know, when you're shooting action, this looks like it's dangerous. It's not. I've got an exit. I've got an area which I can slide straight down the hill there. Uh, I'm off to one side. When something is coming towards you, it doesn't go sideways. It goes straight on. So you can be pretty close to a subject. Just know what you're doing. Know what the rider is doing. And like I said, have an exit. It's another one just about to come down on me. But, you know, by that stage, you know, I'm out of the way. I'm stuffing the camera up there and, you know, although that's probably about 30 centimetres from my head, um, it's past me. So there's no risk. And there's there's another one. You can see with that, you know, we've got movement in the tyres and, you know, a little bit of movement in the landscape. And, you know, that's kind of what it's about. Now, although these shots... <laughs> This is um, full frame with a 24, so, yeah, I threw that in there. But, um, you know, these shots, like I was saying, they're nothing remarkable, but this is what I went, went out to do that day, and I wanted to get in there and do something which is a little bit different. You know, normally it's just the flying through the air stuff, and I really wanted to get in tight and get in close and, and um, you know, just have a little bit of fun with Corey, and, and uh, I had fun, and he had fun. In this sequence, I did use auto area wide for all of them because I wasn't triggering the shutter until the bike was pretty much full frame. So I just wanted to give the camera an opportunity to lock on quick and for me to pan out of it. And uh, I think it's done it really, really well. Now this one here, this is another one of the shots that I've been wanting to do of Corey for quite some time and I've seen similar that he's done and I just love that whole rural background and you know the fact that he's just flying through the sky like an absolute pilot and I think it worked out pretty good actually I'm really happy with this shot and as you can see you know it's just pin sharp what I did do with this one is because I knew the frame that I wanted so I used the auto area large square and I slotted it into that corner pocket so that I had a little bit of little bit of leeway because don't forget this thing's coming at me you know a good 60 kilometers an hour maybe even faster I have to check with him actually so yeah I've been hanging to do this shot for a long long time and same with this one um, now I know that these shots are not full frame they're not sitting there showing you um, you know super long lens of tracking it but don't forget, we're talking about a small square up in that corner that a lot of cameras would want to go to the clouds, but it's not. It's locking onto Corey, and I'm having to pan all the way from the beginning of the jump all the way through. And uh, oh, so lucky we got this sky that day. And here's the Superman. Same thing again, what I'm talking about, you know, tiny little focus point. It's picked it up, picked him up, pin sharp, just absolutely glorious. Nice little bit of flare coming off the sun there with the uh, 
with the 24 to 70. Um, on this day, I was shooting the 14 to 24, the 24 to 70, and the 70 to 200, the Holy Trinity, as you well know. And oh, so this is the number one shot that I've been gagging to do. So this is Kyrie launching off his quarter pipe, and he's just, he's only like a metre above it, I think, at this stage. Now, I just love all that background, and, and it's kind of funny because although this is a most spectacular stunt, the only part that works for me as a still frame is this when he pops off the ramp and then when he lands, which is here. And so the rest of the time I'm following it, I'm panning up and chasing the action, but it's not really much that uh, that I'm interested in, which is kind of funny. And as you can see here, you know, eyes absolutely pin sharp. I love looking at this frame on a big screen. Now, my little technique with this one was that I was on the large auto area again, and I had manual focused for the end of the ramp. Because he has a long run up, I didn't want to risk it of picking a spot and staying there. So I gave the camera a little bit of a help. I was being the boss, like you should be as well. And manual focus on the end of the ramp. When he started to come up the ramp, that's when I triggered and started firing the frames. And then I followed him up and over on that high speed burst. And I got these two pretty nice frames out of it. And I only did a couple of these ones actually because he was uh, getting ready for the games and uh, we didn't want to push it too much. Love those gold rims. Now, oh, this is this is the one shot that we did get, and I've never done one of these before, the layered out the action, and it was really fun to do. It took me like four hours to figure it out on YouTube, but, you know, I did it in the end. And, uh, you know, just a little bit of foreground through a car wreck window, you know, kind of makes it, and you can really see what I was talking about. And I was, when I did the other shots, this is where I was standing right there, and, you know, this was the shot with the 24 mil of the, uh, with the landscape in the background. And that's the other shot there pretty much. And, um, you know, you can see this beautiful arc, but it's not much of a shot for me. Although it's gorgeous looking at it from here, when I'm standing where I was, all you can see is the sky and it doesn't give it really much perspective. So yeah, crack that one. We'll do them again. And right, now into the 70 to 200. Now for these ones, I used the dynamic. And as you can see, again, pin sharp, tracking straight toward, well, three quarters towards me, I guess. Not, couldn't be straight towards me, it would run me over. But, uh, you know, again, beautiful. This is like 150, 140 mil on the 70 to 200. And um, right, this is from the other angle. So this is Corey in the middle of a whip, well, at the, yeah, in the middle of a whip. Now, this is the, the subject pushing away from me. Now, most cameras find it very difficult to pull up focus doing that. Um, cameras have no trouble getting the focus of a subject coming towards you, but for some reason going away, uh, it gets a bit tricky. But I had no problems at all with the Z62 doing these. And as you can see, you know, and here's, um, here's the champ there. Uh, okay, team, let's hook into some settings. Press the menu button. Now go straight down to the camera icon, the photo shooting menu, and let's scroll down here to NEF raw recording. Now I have mine set to uh, raw compression, which is lossless compressed. Find that helps speed the camera up as well. Now, this is the important part for me, turbocharge, 12-bit. The 14-bit here, I find, does slow the focus down and does slow the, um, the frame rate down too, surprisingly enough. So my advice, put it on 12-bit and uh, you're going to turbocharge your camera. If you need the 14-bit for colour, well, that's all well and good. Um, I don't. Right, well, that's set. Now, let's go into focus modes. Now, what I do here is the AFC, I set to release. Now, that's because I uh, want to keep the frame rate up and I'd rather an image tiny little bit out of focus than miss the shot. 
but you know a lot of people will set it to focus there's no right or wrong there i don't think um on afs it's not an action thing but i do set that to focus now the focus tracking with lock on i've tried every one of these and i have to say i think just number three in the middle works best for me I use all the focus points because I want to have the opportunity to push the focus all the way to the edge and, you know, wherever I want it to be, not like the old DSLR days where it was all grouped in the centre. Now, store uh, points by orientation, um, I have that off. The AF activation I have turned on. I'm not someone that knows how to use back focus. Now, uh, I know I'm going to get a whole bunch of uh, questions in the comment section below but the thing is i just can't get my head around it so i just use the front button and away i go now limiting the af mode selection i have them all on because i use them for different things now focus point wraparound i always have this on now the reason why i do that is because right here we've got a focus point there so if i'm searching for the action and i get to the edge here it, otherwise, it stops if you have it turned off, right? So if it's turned on, see how it comes over to the other side? So that's uh, that's the reason why I do it, because I want to keep going. Sometimes I find it quicker to just keep going than to get to the end where it's stuck and it's like, oh, damn it. And um, so, yeah, there you go. That's one that I use. <laughs> right, so focus point options. Manual focus is off at the moment uh, and dynamic AF assist is on. Low light AF is off. Definitely the AF uh, assist illuminator I have turned off because I work on a film set. If that goes off in the middle of a take, um, I'm in uh, deep trouble. Now, A12, this is the really important one that I was talking about before. That's the manual focus ring in AF mode. I have that disabled. You can enable it quite easily if you want to, uh, but I don't, so that's A12. And I can't put it into my eye menu, which uh, would be very handy to be able to do that, to tell you the truth. Now, another thing that I do is I set my max continuous release to maximum, <laughs> and I don't have any exposure delay or anything like that. The shutter type, when you're shooting action, you really should be shooting mechanical shutter. Don't go silent, you know, unless you're doing a golf swing, but you're going to get some warp in something like a uh, golf club. View all in continuous mode, D12. This is a really important one. That's the part which eliminates the blackout. So if you turn that on, it shows you all the images as you're shooting them. So otherwise it just goes to black and you can't see any. <laughs> so try that one out for yourself. Now, another thing that I find very handy is to be able to lock the shutter and aperture. Now, it's a little tricky to find. It's F4, but you can customize the controls and you can add it, as you see, I have it added here. Shutter speed and aperture lock. I find that really handy to be able to get to, especially when you're doing like studio work and you've got, uh, you know, flashes going off. You want to lock it so that, you know, you don't bump it mistakenly or, you know, just any any reason to have it locked. So that's a good one to keep. And you can put that in your eye menu as well. Right. Well, let's go into the eye menu and we'll have a look what I've got here. Now, the way I've got it set up, silent mode. Now, the reason why I have it set to that is because I, again, shoot on a film set and I need to activate that quite frequently. So I have the silent off and then, you know, if I want to go to mechanical shutter, I just flick it over there and it's on. And then I have image quality. Now, I like to have this in there just so that I can make sure that I check that I have got it on RAW. I only shoot RAW and I want to make sure that I don't have any mistakes. So, you know, just by pressing the I menu, I can uh, bring it up straight away and have a look at those settings. The focus peaking is brilliant, especially if you're on a quiet film set. I really like that. Now, apply settings to live view. Um, this is a good one to have too because uh, the focus can speed up if you turn that off, but it also means that you cannot see your exposure live. So I keep it on so that I can see what's going on, you know, as it says, apply settings to live view. Now, the release mode, I don't often use high plus or the high star, high asterisk, whatever you want to call it, but I do when it comes to action because it helps me follow the action better because it's uh, just, you know, faster refresh. 
Continuous high is what I would normally use it on, and I do use it quite a lot on continuous low when I'm on a film set and it's, you know, just like a dialogue scene or something like that. Right. Focus modes. Single point AF, I use that on portraits a lot. Uh, I find it really helpful. Dynamic area AF, that's my go-to when uh, I can't think of what to do. I go there. Now, the wide area AF small that I use frequently, as you've seen in the video previously. The wide, the same thing. It just means that you can isolate the subject from everything that's going on. The wide area AF large for people, that's actually really helpful um, when you're using eye focus. You know, and you've got to give a camera every opportunity it can to lock in. You know, like I said, you know, they're not magic wands. You've got to you've got to do some work and you know, selecting the correct focus mode is part of it. Auto area AF, that's a you know, that's a good go-to if you're just photographing a person standing in front of you and you know, maybe a landscape. Same thing with the auto area AF people. Um, you know, it's great with the eye focus and you know, it works really, really well. I don't use it that often because I'll uh, have a tendency to go to manual focus. But when I have used it, it's it's really, really good. I don't shoot animals very often, uh, but I've tried it out on our pet cat, Ovi, and uh, it works really good. The focus mode, AFC is me nearly all the time. Um, I will put it into single very, very rarely, but I trust the camera on AFC. And, you know, even if someone just moves – a few centimetres, if you're um, on single and you're shooting wide open, they will drop themselves out of focus. Now, the vibration reduction, I mostly always use. And uh, as you see, it's set to sport at the moment because of the way I throw a camera around. Now, choosing the image area, the FX, DX, 1.1 and 16.9. 16.9 is actually really fun on a film set, not that I use it much. Um, the square, I don't use that much either. I really only use the DX and the FX, but I don't get in there all that often, so it's pretty much always set on FX. Now, I do change the shutter type frequently. I do go between mechanical and electronic. I don't uh, go to auto, but whenever I can, I use mechanical, and on a film set, I'm always on uh, electronic. Custom controls, I do use this. Because I can, uh, you know, things like here, I can change what I want to do with everything pretty much on the camera. You know, just, just it really is exactly what it says. It's customizing so that you can get to these settings nice and quick. Now, white balance, I mostly shoot Kelvin because I'm matching what a director of photography does on a film set. But, you know, if it's outside, like with Corey and stuff, I just went to like, uh, A2, you know, you can go to natural light, auto, but uh, there's so many. You know, cloudy is actually really good because it just warms it up a little bit, you know, same as shade. But, you know, as a general rule, um, I'll just go on natural light, auto. So there you go. That's my eye menu settings. Hope you found some of them helpful. Like I said, I have these set for things that I'm using constantly every day. Uh, you are going to set yours to something that's completely different to what I do and I don't blame you. Right, now for the observant of you, right there, you might have seen something that looks a bit strange over the sensor. Right, let me take this off. My little eyepiece cover. Right, you'll see some tape. Now, I cover up the sensor so that it doesn't turn my camera off. Now, um, you might think that's a little bit weird, but for me, the second I pull my eye away, the EVF shuts down. And then when I pull it back up, then it takes a little while to restart. Now, when I'm shooting action, I might put a camera down, but I want to pick it up and shoot straight away really, really quick. So that's why I tape it. So uh, I don't know if it's something that is helpful for you guys, but um, it was doing my head in because I was missing shots because I was waiting for the camera to boot back up. So there you go. There's my little tape hack. Well, team, I hope you found some of those settings helpful. And um, if you got any questions, go down below. And also, if you have any other suggestions for everyone that's uh, checking out the vid, let me know that as well. 
But there's also another video that I've done on settings for the Z6 and Z6 II. That is uh, a way more in depth, but this one's pretty much just about action. Okay, have a great day and speak to you guys soon. Cheers.